right, what's up, everybody? Um, I have a special episode today. Um, I know it's been a minute. It's been a hot minute I'm trying to figure out where we've been, where I've been, what, what's been going on. Uh, honestly, man, it's been a lot going on in my life <laughs> and a lot going on in my co-host Marcus life. So keep him lifted in prayer. Um, but most importantly, man, the biggest thing is, you know, we have not given up on one faith. Uh, we haven't given up on um, the work that God has given us. <clears throat> the biggest thing has been, um, you know, we've been just dealing with a lot in our own personal lives, you know, and I think that the work of the ministry is always going to be there. Um, but the first ministry is, you know, the ministry at home, how you take care of home, how you take care of things uh, going on in your life and things like that. And so, you know, that has always been like the forefront of mine. And so I'll always, if you don't see me for a period of time, it's because I'm either taking a hiatus from social media I'm doing something with my family or I'm just I'm just extremely busy with life. <laughs> so <clears throat> but today, you know, I have a very special episode because, you know, I've been trying to get this thing back going. I know back in what was it like March, April, we said we're back. We ain't going nowhere. And then <laughs> we dipped for like <laughs> we dipped for months. But <laughs> It wasn't intentional, y'all. It wasn't intentional. We dipped. Um, so the biggest thing that I'm going to address right now is why I got this brother right here. <laughs> why I got him <laughs> on the podcast with me today. This is my brother, man. This is my guy. <clears throat> like, I we go back. How long has it been? Like, what? Like, about seven oh, years. Seven years. Man. Like we we've years. been we've been boys since shoot back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> we've, been, we've been through it together, man. We've been through it. <laughs> been really? through the ringer. So I know this episode is gonna be <laughs> It's gonna be all right, man. It's gonna, it's gonna be, be talked about. But you know, we ain't gonna address none of that, that crazy stuff. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I might say a thing or two. You never know. <laughs> I might say a thing or two. You never know. But anyway, but um, this is my boy uh, Dennis, aka Da, aka Big Man, Big um, Big Mirror, aka <laughs> aka. Uh, this brother is the best. He's the best, bro. But I got Big Da on the podcast today, y'all. What's up, Da? Not much, man. I'm good, bro. I'm actually honored to be on the podcast. It's been a long time coming, and just as you already, you know, said that you've been busy with life, I have too, um, with both personal things and school, of course, work, whatnot. So it's been a journey, um, yeah. but I am glad I am able to come through and, you know, definitely support your movement. Like, even though I haven't been on behind camera or whatever, I've always been supporting, um, you know, your podcast, supporting your moves, everything you got going on. Just like you stated, man, you my brother for real. I mean, you showed up for me in the best times and you showed up for me in the worst times. Like, it don't get any closer than that. So I definitely yeah. appreciate you, man. Yeah, it get no closer than it that. It really don't. <laughs> If it get any closer, then that's just gay. <laughs> I was gonna go that far. I was gonna say you probably be blood related, but you know, <laughs> we, def- you, we definitely blood related. But you got it, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I, as you can tell, this episode is gonna be kind of hilarious because um, you know we are just every time we talk, every time we get together, there's always something going on. Um, you know, this dude, he, I pretty much like I got a. A fifth bedroom, but I mean, you haven't stayed in it yet. But you know, this many, I mean, as much as he's at our house, <laughs> you might as well claim that fifth that bedroom. <laughs> I looked at it tonight, to be honest, it's 11 o'clock, so I was like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, man, so we're gonna go ahead and get started because you know, it's we got a lot to discuss. You know, we've been talking about a couple of things for a while. Um, and then I had a topic in mind that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, mainly was just, you know, because, you know, you're a seminary, you're doing your thing. Um, you're able to, um, graduate very soon. Um, and so the Lord has, has blessed you. He's elevated you. Uh, you're now, um, an elder you're doing, you know, God's work in God's church. Right. Um, you're doing so much, so much now. 
that I'm like, yeah, I got to get this brother um, and get his opinion on some things, on some things. <laughs> but it was a topic that I had addressed to you a while back. We were talking. <clears throat> I sent you like a list of topics that I wanted to discuss. Mm-hmm. And you was like, I want to do this one. I want to do this one right here. I'm ready to do this one. And I was like, dude, you 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 didn't even see the rest of them. Like, <laughs> did you even read the rest well, of them? If I can interject, the reason why that one stuck out is because I was literally just coming out of that that course. Yeah. So it was fresh in my mind, fresh in my brain. I'm like, okay, well, if there's anything we can talk about, I'm properly equipped for this topic here. So Yeah, you definitely equipped for this one. <laughs> so that's why I was like, okay, cool. This will be the easiest one. I can come on, we can chop it up, and then, you know, go from there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So basically, we are talking about Paul. <clears throat> so there's like a floating idea going around that says, like, if Paul... Um, was still alive today, you know, what church would be getting a letter? (laughs) Like, what church would be getting a letter from the Apostle Paul? And so we have kind of discussed it at length a little bit. But for the most part, you know, I think that where this topic will go, we're going to give full disclosure, you know, the, the views and opinions that are represented on here tonight does not represent <laughs> any ministry or anything that we're tied to or that we're attached to. Uh, we are, you know, two men of God who just love the Lord, right. you know, really humble servants of the Lord. Um, but, you know, we have to discuss this. So, Dennis, DA, Big Mirror, yes, if Paul had to write a letter to, I'm not even going to say like the American church. But just to the church in general like Today, today. <clears throat> Who, Who's getting that letter <laughs> And why um, I'll be honest with you That's a loaded question And the funny thing about that No nah, you get the answer you gave me I, 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 oh, look, I ain't beating around the bush I'm going to give you the answer now I'm going to give you the answer So the funny thing about that is when I did my report and I submitted it, I posted this question on social media, right? Just as a joke, because I was thinking, I was like, after everything I was studying and reading, I was like, yo, we're just, we're missing it. And I'm going to get into that, you know, I'm going to get into that, but I was like, yo, we just missing it. And so when I posted it, I got certain responses or whatnot, but what I did not know was that other people were saying this. I don't know if it's prior to me posting it or whatever, or maybe at the same time, but other people was posting this too, like in a certain form of like, if uh, I think when I see one was like, if, if Paul was alive today, America would be getting a letter or something like that. So then when I started seeing him, like, how did this all of a sudden start popping up? Now I know I'm not that popular. You know what I mean? Like I knew I wasn't <laughs> that bright when I got it floating around, but I did start seeing it in different, different spaces or whatnot. So, I'm going to say my answer, and I'm going to only say it not because it's, I'm not going to say it because it's a direct um, hit to this particular body. It's a direct hit, y'all. It is not a direct hit. It is not a direct hit. It is not a direct, matter of fact, here's what I'm going to do to make it even more fair. To make it even more worse? I'm just like, nah, make it more fair <laughs> is I have two, um, two churches in mind. And it's only because of influence, to mm. be honest with you. It's not as not because you gotta remember these letters, right? These letters were written by Paul as um how I wanna word this. He was sending it out to churches he already established. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it was already churches that was, you know, it wasn't so many Little churches here and there. He's really sending it to direct people. And a lot of these letters are also circulating letters. Right. So one church will read it and get the church leader. And then it, you know, keeps going around. So, um, well, with the exception, well, I wouldn't say the exception of Rome. He was writing in preparation to go to Rome. He never went there or whatnot, but there were saints that did, that was at Rome. So that's what Romans come from, which is my favorite, uh, favorite book of the Bible is Romans, but that's another time for another time. So, when I said this, at first, yeah, it was all a joke, but when I really sat back and thought about it, it would have to be a church of influence, right? It would have to be leadership of influence. It would have to be um, in the spirit of 
getting this letter, <laughs> understanding some things, making some corrections, and then like really just going forth of understanding what the Apostle Paul was saying, understanding mm-hmm. and just like looking at it in 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 um in context and understanding what's being mentioned and what's flowing. And just off of you know, off of influence alone, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. So you say influence. Mm-hmm. Now, this is going to be suspension because I know everybody wants to know what church he's talking about. Nah, it's going to be obvious, but go ahead. <laughs> it's going to be I'll probably get called tomorrow. Yeah, you're definitely going to gonna get called. Yeah, you're definitely going to get called. But you say influence. Mm-hmm. Define influence. Influence. All right. So, and look, listen. When I say this, I don't say it to insult anybody's church. I don't say it to insult anybody's work, ministry, none of that. Because everybody's ministry, especially when you're doing something for God, everybody's ministry is important. So when I say influence, what I mean is that, for lack of a better term, uh, a powerful organization, okay. right? Okay. So having like a powerful organization, a well-oiled machine at this particular moment, but having a well-oiled machine, powerful organization with, with leaders versus like a mom and pop type Church, you know what I mean? Yeah. The storefront type deal. Not that the storefront is any less than, you know, a, a mega church or, 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 or a huge denomination, because I'm going to address that as well today. But um, what I'm saying is influence, right? There may not be people that know. Um, matter of fact, let me do this. Um, what I love about Bishop T.D. Jakes' ministry, right, is the fact of, yeah, we look at him now. But when I I love his sermons because he always take us back to West Virginia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He always take us back to take his us back home. Yeah. Right, to his beginning, to his storefront, to um, you know, when he was broke, when he ain't have money, when he was struggling. I love hearing that because what we look at now is okay, cool. He has the power, he has the influence, he has all that, but you can look back of where he came from. Yeah. So I'm going to get to where I'm getting to, but it's not to insult the small church because that doesn't make the small church insignificant. But if we have urgency and like uh, order put in place, we need somebody with influence. So right? like a church that's like already established, right. a church that has, um, a, 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 I would say, a, a reputable reputation sure. um, in the Community, right. a church that is well known, a solid um, reach. yeah, a solid reach, mm-hmm. um, and has. Uh, I hate to do this, but like it has millions of followers. Right, per exactly. If we were to yeah. kind of you know bring it to a more modern term, right. like if we were to say like you know well everybody's on social media, but like mm-hmm. a church that has or a, a person or a, a influencer, a social media influencer that has that amount of following and that amount of. I would say respect from people too. Right. So, all right, I'll let you get into your answer because oh yeah, no. you know, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm messy, y'all. I'm messy. So nah, yeah, and and that's another thing. Let me because I'm gonna disclaim my own my own right now that I'm not. This isn't a messy topic. This is an influential thing. So very messy, y'all. Very messy. So the person that I'm going or the 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 organization and whatnot, what I'm going to say has nothing to do with so much specifically. As they're receiving a letter to attack them, but receiving the responsibility of getting things in order. So, so it's like a, a letter of correction. Right. Of getting things in order. And it's not even necessarily addressed to them or addressed to that situation of saying like, y'all are messing up or y'all are dropping the ball. It's more like. I'm depending on y'all to lead out in this correction. Yeah. Set the example. Yeah. Set the standard. Yeah. Reset even in your own house and get it together. And that's yeah. a lot of what Corinthians was about, and I'm gonna get into that too. Yeah. Um but um so two, like I said, two um two places came to my mind automatically was um Bishop T D Jakes. Mm. Right? Bishop getting a letter. The, yeah, and see like <laughs> Sounds your, weird, right? Your favorite, your favorite bitch is getting a letter from Paul, and, and it's not. And, and, and the reason why is because of influence. When I watch his sermons, right? Matter of fact, he's the reason why I even went back to uh, theology school, right? Mm-hmm. Why I wanted to study because the way 
the way he articulates scripture, the way he really gets into it, the way, um, you know, the way he breaks it down, right? Yeah. And the way he just can speak and to talk to people. But what I love most is that his settings change, right? Mm. Even when his settings change, he don't change. Yeah. But he has such a style and charisma about himself that it can be a casual, cool setting and you can still get a solid word. Right. Right. So like even okay, so you can see him on Sunday mornings or even on his Wednesday night Bible studies, you watch his videos, watch him live. He gives you a solid word, right? But then you can watch him on a breakfast club, right? Or something where him and um Pastor Furtick is just having a conversation or uh just one of his little podcast moments. Yeah. And he'll talk, but it's still nuggets there. Like he just has it on all the time. Like he never turns it off. Now I don't know what it's like to chill with him or on a personal level or be in his house or anything. Yes, you do. I, I'm trying to get there, but yeah. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to get there. But um, but yeah, he don't turn it off. Like he's so cool. He's not. But here's the thing: he's not deep. He's not somebody that's like going to be deep all the time or somebody that's just higher than somebody. It's the way he can relate to the people, and so. The reason why I said he would get one was not, it has nothing to do with his church. It has nothing to do with him. I know I would be tuned in if Bishop T.D. James (laughs) read the letter from Paul. I don't care what I'm doing. At that time, they say, like, I ain't never, I'm going to be honest, I'll never be really watching him. um, State of the unions or whatever the president yeah. be doing, like yeah. nine o'clock and everything shuts down. Yeah. I'm trying to find something else on TV. But if they say nine o'clock, okay, T Mr. T D Jenkins is reading a letter from Paul, <laughs> bro, I'm there. I might even fly to Texas for this one. I'm yeah. there. And it, it's, it's because of how he would bring this letter out. And and so again, like I said, it has influence. Like, so it'll reach millions of people. And then not only that, I'm sure it'll circulate, especially in this time of social media and different things like that. It'll circulate. And again, it has nothing to do with him, nothing to do with his church. That has to do with influence. Now, the second church, or, you know, his church is collective, is he smiling. <laughs> that boy said churches. He, he, he's smiling because <laughs> he know where I'm headed. He's smiling because he know I'm headed. The second one would be the church of God in Christ. Okay. Right. Okay. And again, it has nothing to do with, um, incorrectness. It has to do with influence. Right. Okay. Okay. And, um, I want to say this and I want to say it very clearly because, uh, you know, once we really get into it, everything will make more sense. But, um, knowing the rich history of the Church of God in Christ, right? Mm-hmm. And knowing the rich history of the Pentecostal movement, um, the influence, especially in the African American community, um, it is it is very much a staple in, in African American history. Like that cannot be ignored. Even yeah. with the other Pentecostal movements we have now and other, you know, denominations. The way, you know, they dress, the things they do, the protocols. If you look back to the roots of it, it all goes back to the church of God in Christ. Right. So, again, that comes off of influence. Influence, yeah. Another thing, just like how because of who Bishop T.D. Jakes is, I would pay attention. Just because of the man who Bishop uh, Sheard is, yeah. I would pay attention. Yeah. And it's not that I just started... Watching Bishop Shear started listening to him since he became presiding presiding prelate. Mm-hmm. I've actually watched him through the years um, uh, on on various platforms of him preaching. Um, I follow him on social media, of course, and he's always had something positive to say. Um, always has something encouraging to say, and it's not. And with him, you're not going to always. You know, he can take it there. He can hoop. He can take it there <laughs> if he has to. Right, but. It's about the delivery. With me, like, you gonna understand it. Like I'm not a hooper at all. My voice may elevate, I may get excited, but I really, yo, if you could just give me the <laughs> word, I'm sorry. Yeah, if you could, you know, I was thinking about the moment when he yoked up his son on national TV oh, on that. You, see, you, had, you had it somewhere completely different. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking influence, about, y'all. Influence. Yeah, I was thinking more about about him as the man. Like you know the way he delivers his word. He um does like um. 
I, I catch it late sometimes, but so I think it's this Friday night Bible study or Wednesday oh, yeah. night Bible study. Uh-huh. Yep. I catch it though, and like he he's just sitting there and teaching. When I can get somebody a preacher that can teach and talk the word, I'm in. You ain't got to really give me the fanfare, jumping, screaming, you know, killing. I'm in, right? Right. And so now that he's the leader, the, uh, the presiding prelay of the churches of God in Christ, like it's a lot of things he's done already that um, is very impressive. Like, I mean, I seen one clip, um, uh, and I'm a probably I'm probably be wrong, but it, I know it was a national meeting, and um, they were like going up in service or whatever, and he like. I guess they were going to either move on or something like that, but he grabbed the mic and said, I've been praying too long, and um, he's like, we're not going to move. I mean, and the church just went up after that, right? Yeah, yeah. That is good leadership, and let me tell yeah. you why that's good leadership. Because I'm about order, I'm about protocol, I'm about all that, but I think too much, we put too much emphasis on order and protocol when the spirit is moving. Yeah. Now, if it's that's nonsense, good. if somebody's just giving nonsense, just up there talking, wasting time, my brother, it's time for you to move on. Yes. Yeah. But at the same time, if the spirit is moving, the spirit is high, rushing that moment or being in that space with, 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 with the Holy Spirit, you can't. Uh, you can't rush that moment. And so when I see leaders um, exhort and move in that moment of not shutting it down or even the presider, like, all right, we got to move on. Like, if people are getting a breakthrough, like, you got to think about it. Like, what we come to church for? Of course, we come to hear a word from the Lord. But at the same time, if there's people struggling or they want a breakthrough, and, you know, maybe the, the song moved them, the word moved them, something happened to where an individual is pressing their way and they are getting their breakthrough and they are tearing before the Lord. There's no reason to rush that moment. And so, you know, even watching those reposts and when I caught the video and watched it, I felt chills watching that. Yeah. Because it was such, a, it was a moment. And yeah. I, I wish I could find it again and remember what it was. I want to say it was convocation last year. I do want to say that, but it may not have been. But... To watch that moment of the leader now leading leading the Saints higher, that, that's a whole different dimension. That's a whole different level. And then you, you see him in the trenches. Like, I've seen pictures with him hugging the kids and, um, you know, dur- during their um, – during AIM, he was – pictures of him hugging the kids. He's a pe- He seems like a very uh, grounded and people person. And that's what we're missing in leadership today. And so I picked those two people because I, in my mind, those are some serious influential people today. These are people that you really want to, you look at as leaders that you want to really imitate. These are the people that you look at as leaders and you say, you know, nobody's perfect. I don't know either one of them on a personal level. I only see probably what, you know, the average person sees, you know, right. see them out. But you can only front and be somebody but so many times. Yeah. And in so many different settings. Yeah. And so, you know, it was even a story about him one time that, well, he told the story, but he was saying that uh, some kids were trying to talk to him one time and come hug him. And like his armor bears was trying to, you know. Uh, back the kids up from him and whatnot because they had candy or something. He's like, well, what's candy? I can put the suit in the clean. Like, it doesn't matter. Just, yeah. let, let, let. And you think of that, right? And, it, and I'm not saying this in a sacrilegious way, but you think of that, that's the same moment that happened with, with, with Jesus and the children, right? Yeah. And that's when he says, suffer the little children, not the, but suffer the little children to come unto me because they're trying to hold the whole, like, and you have people like that. You have ministers, preachers, you know, pastors that are like that as if they're above reproach and above, above people. A leadership position is a servant position. And that's always the first thing people need to really fully understand is that, yes, you're at the top. You're at, you're the head, but you're also in that position to serve those that are underneath you. Yeah. So that's why even the foot washing moment of uh, of Jesus was such a powerful move, because that's literally the service job for when visitors and travelers came through. They would uh, get their feet washed. You know, from traveling, and then, you know, that would be the service job. They'll meet them at the door, wash their feet when they're traveling, and that way they're clean for, you know, supper or dinner or whatever, you know, the visitation. But 
the whole idea behind Jesus doing that was an example of like, yeah, I'm, I'm Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm the leader. Yeah, I'm the Messiah. But I'm not above serving my brothers. Right. And that's the biggest thing that the church is missing today is that we get these positions, we get these titles, and all of a sudden we're too big to serve each other. And so, yeah, that's good. That's that good. was, um, that was really the why. And I really wanted to explain because I don't, I mean, I know we're going to put the clips out and we're going to have this, but I don't want anybody to ever look at this and be like, oh, he's talking about the church of God in Christ or, oh, he's talking about TDJ. No, I'm actually bigging them up because I think they're big, uh, influential leaders. And these are actually people that I personally admire and I look up to. Look at you. I do. You've grown so you much. Got, <laughs> well, that's because you can't, you can't be a person that just like figured it out and just got it on their own. Like I said, like it was TDJ that got me back in school, man. Like I was like, I was thinking to myself, I remember too, I was thinking to myself, I was like, Watching him preach And I'm thinking like You don't get it like that Unless you spend time with God Unless right. you really study Unless right. you put the time in right. And what I went to school for Is to not Not so much to, to To learn the Bible But to learn how to Properly exegete the text Learn how to properly research uh, Scripture You know uh, Context is a big thing with me um, Because people read Things and then they just go from there. It's things that I'm even realizing and reading now from my assignments yeah. of looking at scripture different, and yeah. all that pays a part. So, you know, it's just the these are two influential people that I really thought about. I was like, when I thought about, it, I was like, they would receive the letter and they not only receive it, but they will know what to do with it. Right? They, they will know what to do with it. So right. Those are those are my answers. It wasn't a messy answer. It wasn't anything crazy. Those are my answers because I feel. Those are two powerful men of influence. Yeah, yeah. That's good. You just wasted our time. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't get I'm messing, I'm messing, I'm messing, y'all. I'm messing, I'm messing, 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 messing. No, nah, but you know, I I actually I, I like that answer because I think that a lot of times when we when we think of that that particular question, we're looking at it from the lens of, oh, these people are messing up. They need to be corrected. Right. They need to be, you know, rebuked. And we're not doing X, Y, and Z right. Everybody's going to hell. Yeah. Um, and these people, what are we doing in our churches? This, that, and the other. And I think that when we look at it from that approach of influence and saying, okay, well, these leaders have been established. They know what to do. Right. Um, you're looking at it from the perspective of, like, how Paul's relationship with Timothy with me and, and Titus and other people that he wrote the letters to, it was more of an encouragement right. and encouraging them to keep pressing forward, keep going towards the mark, keep right. doing what God has called you to do. Um, I think that that is very um, noble of you, you know, to, to, to come up with that yeah. um, answer. And I'm not saying that to be like, to try to be like messy or anything. <laughs> no, no, I guess because, <laughs> So the thing with me, like, um, because when I did first post, I was being messy. Yeah, you was. was. You can't. You went straight full <laughs> tilt. Like when you told me, I was like, "Yeah, this dude's about to I be." I was. <laughs> I was. Um, but you know, it's like I don't. I don't play when it comes to church. Yeah. I take my relationship with God serious. I take my 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 church serious because, um, it's too much going on out there in the world right now for Facts. us to be playing. Facts. And so when, um. You know, when I was preparing for the pot, now when I first posted it, yeah, like I said, it was a joke. I had a million things, you know, that we could have went on. But when I was preparing for the podcast, I was really thinking about, like, you know, I want to take it serious. And I really thought about it. And I chose my two people because, like I said, because I watched their walk and I watched how they are able to, you know, handle such such an, such their assignments. And I believe they will be handled, able to handle assignment like this. Um, and they won't fumble it. But, right, right. And, 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 um, but the major thing concerning the church in general um, is the lack of unity. Mm, that's and, good. And and I don't know if we're going to segue into this now or not, but that's really, that was really my pressing point. Yeah. Is that we just don't have unity. We don't, we lack, we lack the love that should be shown within the church, within the body of Christ. And that, to me, is definitely the biggest flaw. It's the biggest problem. It's the biggest issue because it's so many. We can't, as Christian brothers and sisters, as the Christian church, as the representation of Christ, 
we can't defeat the enemy fighting with each other or fighting in the midst of each other. Yeah. Um, I think what's become become popular and what what we see often, especially now in this social media area, is that we have preachers constantly um downing other ministries or downing other preachers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To me, here's what I would do. And and again, this is if I had if I was had a platform or if something like that. If I knew my brothers and my si- or my sister was preaching something crazy or preaching something that needed to that's another thing that needed to be addressed. And I'm gonna put it that way. It needs to be addressed. You can see a lot of things on social media that Look, they can say the craziest things, but they have no influence, no nothing. Okay, let them have that. Like, yeah. if that's what they want to do <laughs> to become cool, then let them do that. But if I see somebody preaching or teaching something that's like, eh, I don't know, right? If I have a relationship with that person, if I know them in the slightest or something like that, we would probably have a conversation, a private conversation. Wouldn't be a conversation of me getting up in my next sermon and then using that as a topic. Wow. You know what I mean? That, yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't really be yeah. the thing because now what bothers me is outside looking in, because it's becoming such a trend, it's just preachers attacking other preachers, attacking other churches, attacking other ministries, attacking other thoughts and other 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 ways of fellow Christians. Yeah. So yeah. then we showed a lack of unity to the world. Yeah. So what's the difference between one church or what's the difference between the church A attacking church B, church B attacking church A, then the bloods attacking the crypts? <laughs> they doing the same thing, right? They're in my yeah. territory. We fight, we fight over this, we fight over that. And then now you got church A who's a Republican fighting church B who's a Democrat, and they got things to say back to each other or they insulting each other. Like you know, first of all, that's another thing that that politics should not even influence the church, right? No, that's oh, you about to be uh, yeah that, and the reason why I thought you stepping about on it, some toes now because I recently was just seeing some other things. It like I said, it all goes back to unity, right? Yeah, and 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 it comes down to the Bible and following what Christ said. Yeah, and so I recently was seeing some things and. Um, It it triggered me because I've heard all this before and in certain settings. And when you, your affiliation of your politics, right, does not have any affiliation. Well, let me say it very slow. Your affiliation with politics does not have, or political party, does not have any affiliation with your salvation. Mm. Okay, And here's what I'm going to say that. Wow. Because you're not, unless you're voting for Jesus Christ himself. Which I did. <laughs> I might write that on my next ballot. I honest. definitely wrote that on my ballot. I'm I, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I definitely did. <laughs> unless you vote for Jesus Christ himself, you're not going to have a perfect candidate. Yeah. You're not going to have yeah. somebody that's going to really legit check off all of your boxes. Now, there are everybody. Number one, we're all adults, right? Okay, so you have things that you're looking for in a candidate that you're trying to that that that, that you um you're looking for in a candidate, right? Or or we just had the what the Republican yeah uh, the Republican the Republican debate debates, yeah right and um. I'm be honest, and I probably should throw this disclaimer in there early. I'm not a political type person at all, like at all. Um, but I do watch the debates. I do pay attention. And I do listen. Now, of course, the two hot topics always is abortion and gay rights. You know, we know those are the hot topics, and and we know that um, there are. I don't and I, see. I don't even want to do that. I was about to put them in the Democratic. I don't even want to do that because there's Democrats that's actually against that. Yeah. Two, right? Yeah. There's a lot there, of there's them. a lot of them because I was that was just about to fall into what I'm actually against, right? So you can't you have you can't just associate say, oh I'm gonna be a demo I'm a Democrat, so uh or I'm a Republican but and the Democrats are going to hell or I'm a Democrat and 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 a Republican. It don't work like that. It don't. It has the the two has nothing to do with each other. Now you have your beliefs, you have your standards, and guess what? 
I can't categorize a, an entire party. I can categorize a candidate who will openly say, like, oh, I'm for gay rights or I'm for abortion. Okay, cool. They're out. You know, I'll do that. <laughs> Democrat, Republican, I don't care who right. it is. They're out. I'll do that because that clearly goes against what I believe and what I stand for. Yes. But I cannot look at it in the entire party of saying, okay, well, I'm going to vote for this Republican or I'm going to vote for this or I'm going to vote for Republicans. I'm going to vote for the Democrat. It don't work like that because that, that is not how your, your, your spirituality. First of all, I mean, even make it more basic than that. Your salvation does not hang on the merit of, um, of your political party. Your salvation hangs on the merit of whether you believe in Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9 and 10 has nothing to do with politics. At right? all. At Romans all. 3, uh, 21 <laughs> through 26 has nothing to do with politics. Right. Those two are staples of salvation. 3, 21 through 26 teaches us uh, about that we all sin. We all fall short. But it we're justified through the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus Christ died. And if we believe and accept that free gift of grace... That's what gets us in heaven. That's what gets us our salvation. Doesn't get it through Donald Trump. We ain't getting it through Joe Biden. Definitely not we getting it through Biden. We definitely ain't getting it through Biden. <laughs> we ain't getting it through the Democrats. Guess what? We ain't getting it through the Republicans. We're going to only get it through Jesus Christ. And so when I hear churches attack other churches for their, um, for even just bringing that type of stuff up in itself is, is just a horrible deal. But not only, po- I, I always thought about politics, I just recently heard a preacher talking about another uh, church politics, and that's the only reason why I thought of that. But it's different things people are arguing over. And when I was doing my assignment, it was on 1 Corinthians 12, because we were talking about the body of Christ. Right. This is what got everything started in my head we're missing love and unity yeah that's what we're missing yeah so before you you jump even further because i know you have you have a lot to, to, <laughs> to, I'll to be unpack. Brief. I'll be no you're good you're good because i love it i'm talking too long no though. it's not I'll even brief. it's not even that you know it's like i'm i'm sitting here and i'm listening and i'm engaged because you know i see one you know that tuition is really paying off. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, a heavy, it's a heavy fee. So. <laughs> but two, it's like, you know, I agree so much with what you're saying because, you know, if I were to give an answer to to the first question, what letter, you know, what church would be getting a letter? Yeah, I think all, away. yeah, you did, but it's okay. But <laughs> but the thing is, but this is the thing, What this is what y'all didn't see behind the scenes. I was trying to fix the cameras and stuff and Dennis was <laughs> just, just talking to Nothing that was over here. Tell the secrets. I was trying to make you look good. I mean, you know, you know, we 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 make it happen like that sometimes, you know. But um, but the biggest thing is, you know, that's why you you were kind of you know going and and doing your thing because you was you was eating up the time. You know, I thank God for you, man of God. (laughs) But you know, the biggest thing that I um that I'll say is that is this: I definitely agree with you when it comes to the influence piece. You know, when we look at Paul and what his um, his entire all of his letters were about, he were addressing things that were going on at the churches that he established. Mm-hmm. Not only was he addressing those things specifically, but he was dre- addressing the culture of those churches. He was right. addressing what the people of those churches were being influenced by and who they're being influenced by. And also he was also being uh, he was trying to correct them to go back to. The, the teachings and the things and the principles and the philosophies that he had established in his church. Mm-hmm. I think that is one of the biggest things that we have fallen so far away from. And it goes to your point to unity. And that's why I feel like every church honestly will be getting a letter from Paul, yeah. not just based on influence alone, but based on the fact that, you know, there are so many, there are so many things that we have to clean up as a body. And if I were to like specifically say a church, I would say the American church in particular, because there's so many different denominations. There are so many different things that are going on. Everybody has an opinion on this. Everybody has an opinion on that. But my question is this. What does your opinion has to do with the Bible? What right. does God say at the end of the day? What does the Bible says? What is the Bible saying? And I think that we get so far away from what God is saying to where we are so enamored by 
what we sound like, what we look like, right. the things that we have in our church, what we're trying to attract people, the numbers and this, that and the other right. that we totally missed the mark on, on on what God is really trying to do to his people or for his people in the world today. He's trying to save as many people as he can because we're all his creation. And I think that is the biggest thing that we're missing is that the the, the actual I would say the actual fruitful and full message of the gospel. And that is essentially what Paul was trying to get the churches, all of his churches to get back to was preaching and teaching the gospel, the true gospel. And it's mainly because of the fact that when you look at each and every letter that he wrote, each and every church was dealing with something that was so crazy, so astronomical, right. so weird that he was like, you're totally missing the mark. Right. Like first Corinthians, you got a man that's, you know, sleeping with his, with his, basically his stepmom yeah. and the whole church is like basically, you know, congratulating him and celebrating him and this, this, that, and the other that's far away from the Bible. So right. when Paul's saying to Get rid of this brother Like get rid of him He's saying that Not because he's like You know We don't have We don't You know we, we just get rid of anybody That's doing wrong Or doing sin No he's saying Get rid of him Because of his influence And how he was able To influence the rest Of the church right. and, t- and, and and get them On board with his sin Now that's an issue And that's another topic In and of itself Because There are so many Churches out here that will do things and say things and have influence and will influence people to participate in their sin. And I'm not talking about just homosexual or sexual sins. I'm talking about the sins of covering things up. I'm mm-hmm. talking about the sins of lying from the pulpit. I'm talking about the sins of, you know, just saying and doing anything and treating people any kind of way and thinking that you can get away with it. Right. That falls along the lines of pride. That is a sin that a lot of people do not like to discuss in the church yeah. because they like, oh, well, you know, man of God is a man of God. Touch not the anointed ones. That's yeah. that's a, a scripture that's heavily taken out of context. But the the fact of the matter is, you know, we have to get back to what the gospel is saying. The gospel is what keeps us. The gospel is what is what bonds us. The gospel is what goes to your point, brings unity in the body of Christ, Mm -hmm. which is what this podcast is all about. This podcast is based on Ephesians four and five. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's not about uh, one, you know, particular reformation, one particular set of church, one um uh, one uh, race uh, of church or anything right. like that. It's about all of us coming together. And the thing I love about the body of Christ that I've grown to love over the past few years is how unique and how different we all are. We have different expressions in how we worship and celebrate God. You know, some churches, they get up, they'll clap. You know, other churches, they'll just sit there and just <laughs> I can't be a part of that church But there's <laughs> there's other churches Where you know people will Be so exuberant in their worship and in their praise There's certain types of preaching There's certain types of things that go on in the church And it all goes towards the gospel And when I think about You know Paul he didn't establish These churches that are in America today Or the churches that are all over the world Today but his his writings, like the writings in the Bible, they are heavily influenced yeah. on how we build our churches, how we um, create leadership within churches, how we do things in our church and how we structure the order of service and things in church. So I think that every church deserves, honestly, a letter, every denomination, a Baptist, coffee, yeah. uh, Church of God in Christ. Church of God, Assemblies of God, what um, all of them. I think every church deserves a letter because there are things that, for one, we should celebrate that they're doing, yes, but two, there are things that should be corrected because we're, we've gotten so far away from the mark. Right. Because, and this goes to your other point, too, about preachers talking about other preachers. And that's the thing that, <laughs> that's another part of the sin that I think that we have to talk about and address is because when you sow so much discord and so much disunity within the body of Christ, mm-hmm. there's only one answer or one reason why you're doing that. No matter, you can be saying, I'm doing this in the name of the Lord. I'm doing this, you know, for for God's sake. I'm doing this for the gospel. Right. But truth be told, it's like the only person who sows discord is Satan. You are doing this heavily influenced by the enemy because you see something that does not look like or does not that you do not like personally as a personal opinion or what a personal preference versus what the gospel versus what the Bible says should be right or should be true. 
Now, granted, there are things that are going on in the church, and I'm not making no excuse or advocating for a lot of the stuff that goes on in church. Because that's stuff that goes on in the church that I'm just like, I'm just disgusted of it, period. But there's other things that go on in the church that I feel like they are being misinterpreted mm-hmm. or misconstrued. And they're like, oh, well, that's not of God because they wear skinny jeans in church. That's not of God because they shout all day in church. That's not of God because they speak in tongues. That's not of God because, you know, all these different stupid, you know, nuances that we create or that we misconstrue or misinterpret. They're actually things that express, you know, how we love and worship God. And so I, I, I look at this and I look at, you know, the fact that, you know, God in and of himself you know, he's he's given us everything that we have in this world. He's given us everything that we that we could possibly imagine. He has blessed us so much. Why do we harp on certain things or certain people, certain individuals, certain things? And so this unity or so discord instead of doing things that we should ought to be doing to encourage each other, to bring forth unity, to help each other, to help us grow and develop as Christians, to help us grow and develop as men and women of God. So where do you? That was um, that was really good. And, and it's really good because. Um, the way you brought out the differences, uh, that's something else I wanted to address too, because I'm one that um, will openly be guilty um, or openly say I was guilty of um, looking at different ways of worship, different ways uh, people express themselves, dress, I can openly say I was guilty of being that type of person that let personal preference overshadow um overshadow just accepting differences, right? Yeah. And and even with that is I'm still real leery about what goes too far and having limitations, but yeah, having, me too. <laughs> yeah, having limitations. We go have limitations, but at the same time Understanding that there are different forms of worship, and it does stem back to uh, cultural things. It does stem yeah. to, um, you know, upbringing. It, it stems to background. There's multiple ways, but there's multiple uh, or multiple reasons, but there's multiple ways to worship God and how you worship God. Yeah. And so here's the like, um. You know, the biggest thing that changed me in the way I thought of it was interacting and learning, Mm. right? We can't be too prideful where we cannot learn, right? And so where I was particularly one way in my thinking of like, you know, um, you know, on a personal level, I can't say that because somebody thinks differently but loves the Lord, expresses their love for the Lord, or saved, but or, or let me put it this way. I'm more of I'm always a suit and tie guy, right? That's yeah. me. Yeah. Even uh, when you go yes. take a bath or everybody, when yeah, you everybody gets go out about. to eat, you know, your boy can be going to McDonald's. I'm a suit and tie, and tie guy. Tie. I can't help that. I'm a suit and tie guy, right? In church, like this is too much morning. for me. Like the the whole everything the, you got going on. Polo, like, I thought the polo was cool. The polo, every, that's too much. That's not you. Uh, you know, you usually have the button up and a hat yeah, and all that good true. stuff. That's true. That's me. That's me. That's just me by nature. I'm a suit and tie guy, right? So Sunday morning service, throw my three piece on. Like I already know what I'm wearing tomorrow, so I, I got it hanging up already. I know what I'm wearing. Shoes, Sean, we ready for it, right? But there's churches and other people that be like, all right, well, I'm going to wear my jeans and my tee that even come to my church, right? And so I used to be just really one way about this, like, you know, like it's Sunday morning. And, I'm, and again, this is still my personal thing and it's still how I believe, but it doesn't make anybody else lesser. And that's yeah. really where I'm getting at, right? Yeah. So you're not going to catch me. Like, I remember... Um, July, the last Sunday of July, we actually had dress down day, right? Uh-huh. And, um, or let me make it better. Two years ago, two uh-oh, years uh-oh. ago, when I first went to my church, uh, they had dress down day. And I was like, I'm not heathen. Sure. Yeah, well, I was I used to say heathen. But I was like, you're I'm going not, to hell. I'm, not, I'm like, I'm not dressing down. <laughs> so I get to church, right? I get to church. 
And I was literally the only person in a three piece suit on that side. I mean, the church mothers had skirts, they had jean skirts. Mother had white, a skirt on. Tees, and I'm in, the, <laughs> I'm in the church with a suit on. Man, I thought at least, I thought at least one person might have a suit. Yo, everybody was was chilling, right? So this year, I ain't go full with the sneakers and shorts, but I had a polo on and some slacks. So I'm getting a little bit better. You get a little bit but, better. On Sunday morning, that's my thought, but that's personal, right? And I can't cast my personal convictions and my personal thoughts on somebody else. So if they feel comfortable in their jeans or their tee and they're worshiping God, or they do fine. Okay, you're wearing slacks and a button up, slacks and a polo. If that's your best, that's what you want to wear, fine. I don't have time to argue over that. Now, another thing um, that I openly admitted uh, not too long ago was that um, I never would have thought. Never would have thought, but I listened to and I enjoyed KB's new album. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I we did. thank God for, for I, your deliverance <laughs> with this. I did. I What's enjoyed. your favorite song? What's your favorite King song? King Jesus. King Jesus. King Jesus is my favorite song because, and I'm going to spit it. I ain't going to say the bar word for word, but I'm going to spit it because it's important. But listen to listening to that whole entire album change. I'm like, yo, bro, really going in. Like, I've been trying to tell you yes, for years. Yeah. KB is the truth. I've been telling this man yes. how long we known each other. Use that what seven, seven years. years, seven years straight. I've been telling him I KB, I KB, I KB, I KB for seven years straight. Now this brother Gospel has rap. finally came over. To I won't even say the dark side. It's not even the dark side. But you finally listen oh, and yeah. say, okay, KB is dope. I was like, because to me, I don't know. Again, personal preference, personal conviction. I just didn't like the idea of gospel rap. Like it just didn't, you know, it just wasn't clicking for me. I'm like, I just thought it was corny. I thought like, okay, it just takes you back to that space of like, you know, I, I used to be heavily influenced by rap. I love rap. Like, so if I'm saying I'm supposed to be walking a new way, like I have my own personal convictions. But yet, it's still after even listening to his album. I actually downloaded his first one. I was that too. I said, <laughs> "Look at you!" Hold it on for a minute. Be honest you. I told you. <laughs> like, you can hold it for a minute, but I can't have my personal convictions right. That's um, that, that's not so much in the world. Like, all right, so that's what I mean. If it's not in the Bible, if you're not really causing blasphemy. If it's just your own way of express, like you know. Maybe uh, somebody can't sing. Maybe somebody can't play an instrument. Maybe somebody can't um, uh, uh, preach, but they can write poetry, right? Maybe guess what? They can't sing, but they can flow. They got they can they can probably rap. They can put it together, but they want to still give their glory to God. We can't just shut that down, you know, per se. And yeah. that's something that came to my mind. Yeah, of shutting you. You can't shut that down, and um. What KB said in, in King Jesus, first of all, I love the beat. I love the back and forth. I can't remember the gentleman's name that he's going back and forth with. But I just love that whole, it was a good vibe. I'm just put it that way. That song, I'll keep that on repeat. But Shout out to KB. On, and I think it's 1KV, 1K Foo on that. Something like that. I can't remember. It's like, a, a, I can't remember his name. Um, but they went for it. But one of the bars said, um, I'm not going to say it right probably, but they were saying, What's the point of keeping Christ in Christmas if, if they you, can't if see Christ, Christ in a Christian? Christian? Yeah. And when he said that, it that no gets big me deal. every time, every time, because that is so true. If you out here and you ready to fight for, oh, we got to keep Christ in Christmas or we got to do this for Christ and do that. And at the end of the day, you as a person, as an individual, I can't see Christ in you. Your fight's really in vain. Yeah. Right? And then that always goes back to the Gospels of how Christ lived. Does your life match up to that? And so even with having that mindset of, okay, does my life match Christ's life? Uh, The living example. Another thing I brought out to one of my... um, my professors, um, well, not directly to my professor, but in my, one of my papers, something I thought of was like the way Christ lived spoke just as loud as his words, right? Exactly. So it's not so it's not so much that we read the letters in red and want to follow that. Nah, you got to check out his acts. His acts. 
And you got to check out what he did, how he moved, how he handled business. Like, um, you know, reading John, uh, <clears throat> John seven fifty three through eight eleven, um, how he dealt with with, with, with the with the lady, the damsel mm-hmm. that he brought out that was mm-hmm. you know in the midst of adultery. That whole encounter for me was always something powerful because, and I'm gonna be real brief with it, but it was something really powerful because number one, you got this woman out here. She's she's naked. She's embarrassed. She's in front of all these men. All of that. She's just she's caught in the act of adultery. You know, it's just a whole mess and a whole gambit here. And you know, Jesus. You know, when they when they when they when they brought her before him, then they want to ask him like, you know, well, Moses said the law says, you know, that we're supposed to stone her to death, right? You know, well, what what, is, what do you say? And so instead of Jesus falling for the trap of, or or you know, saying his own words or doing whatever he wants to do, he ignores it. Right. Right. That tells me that, you know, every little thing that somebody brings to me, I don't have the answer for that. Exactly. And you know, you exactly. got to grow up sometimes like you can't, especially me, and I had to mature, you can't flip off the handle at every situation. Every bad thing that's brought before you, you got to understand sometimes it's just the trick of the enemy. Yep. Just trying to see how yep. you're going to react. Trying to see what you're going to do. Trying to see uh, um, uh, something else that they can use against you. Matter of fact, I, I, when, when if I believe it correctly, um, I got to go to it. But I, I believe it, the, the the scripture does say that um, that he boarded before um, trying to find something that they could accuse Christ of. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it was it was a lose lose situation for him. Right. So if he says stone the woman. That means he's condoning killing somebody, right? Right. But then if he says, don't stone her, then, oh, okay, so you're above the law now? Oh, so now you're against the law? So it was a lose-lose for him. Right. But him being level-headed, he ignored it. Wrote in the sand. We don't know what he wrote in particular, but wrote in the sand. (laughs) Kept doing what he was doing. They ask him again. He gives a simple answer. He, without sin, cast the first stone. Then he goes back to writing. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. He gave his answer, and one by one, from the eldest to the least, left the room. They right? all left. Okay. Now you look at that. At that very moment, because of what he said, he's the only one that could have picked up a rock and hurled it. Okay? Right. Exactly. The only one that could have picked up something and just be no anybody else no just me okay and just beamed it at her okay <laughs> just took her all the way out. But he writes in the sand, looks around, says, okay, woman, where are the high accusers, right? Mm. She said, well, there are none. Well, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Now, that's not so much Jesus letting her off the hook. That's Jesus showing grace. That's a great foreshadow of all of us. We've done some mess in our lives. But because of his grace and his mercy, we're still here. And we can go and sin no more. Now, even with that, right? Of saying go and sin no more, I um, I said it. I say this just as a joke sometimes about you know there's always repentance and always that. I say that stuff you know about certain things, but as a joke, repentance ain't nothing to play with. It ain't. I, I want to make that very very clear. Repentance and grace is nothing to play with because God tell Jesus tells her to go and sin no more, right? Okay, so to somebody that's common or don't have uh, a real in-depth look at what the transaction that just really took place and really understand the significance of what just took place, they would seem as if, you know, okay, she was caught in the wrong and just simply let go. In reality, like I said, it was more of a foreshadowing act because Jesus Christ himself, even in that very moment, showed the grace that was to not only at that moment for that young lady, but what was to come for all yeah. of us. Yeah, that because of his bloodshed, because of the final, uh, the, the the final sacrifice, because of the ultimate redemption, we now have that gift of grace where we've messed up, where we've done things, where we've uh, 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 had horrible past, right? But because we said, "God, we're done with that. I'm over this." You know, you can have my life. We, we accept Jesus, that free gift of salvation. We become saved. At that moment, he says, cool, go and sin no more. Now, 
As long as we're in the mortal flesh, the human body, we're going to sin. We're going to slip up, whether it's intentional or not. But we, what we should not, and repentance is there, but what we should not do is depend on repentance. Yeah. Because you can go out and be like, well, I'm going to go... Uh, I'm gonna go just chill, go drink with the boys tonight. But I can always get saved again tomorrow. I can repent. You can go drink, act stupid, and get caught up and killed out in the streets. Okay, <laughs> facts with facts. no opportunity to repentance. None. With none, like I mean, just turning your back on Christ. Oh, putting all that aside, just thinking that oh, I got one more day, one more hour. One more. You can go at any given time. You can be having the best time of your life in sin, and your heart gets out. You don't know when, and you should not play with that. Right. It's a good thing. Another thing I thought of is is a good thing they bought her before Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because say they would have just did their own thing of catching her adultery. Hey, I'm gonna follow the law. This is the Pharisees, right? That's all they were about is the law. Hey, we gonna follow the law. Just just let's stone her and get her done without Jesus knowing. No, instead they bought her before Jesus. Mm -hmm. The best gift they could have gave her was bringing her before Jesus. Bought this young lady before Jesus. Jesus enters into her life, gives her the grace and the mercy, and tells her to go and sin no more. Now, let me tell you something that further uh, that exceeds that without even being said: that God gave grace, Jesus gave grace, gave instruction. If she went out and started, you know, whoring again. And get caught, there's no guarantee that Jesus is gonna be around again now. Right. You know, and so that's how we gotta think about our own selves. Like, okay, man, like, all right, well, I had a crazy night last night. I repent, God, I'm so sorry. Okay, you know, I repent with a sincere heart. Okay, I'm back in the right standing. But don't take that for granted that you won't be able to keep doing that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The free gift of salvation and repentance is always there. Yes. But do not play with God's grace. Ooh, that's good. Don't do it because it's risky. It's, it's some things that's personal to me that, um, you know, uh, uh, Bishop Macklin, um, he was talking about, he was coming to, uh, back home to preach a funeral or something like that. And he was talking, and the people that, and, and what makes this moment so chilling is the fact that he didn't say much, but the people that was spiritual caught what he was saying. And he was saying that <clears throat> he was having trouble coming home because his flights was getting delayed. His flights was getting canceled. And he was saying that um, he said he was so close to home on his last flight. And he said he was just praying, God, don't let this flight be canceled. Mm. And he said this. And I could watch the video. He doesn't say much. All he said that got the people going was you don't want to be this close to home and your flight get canceled. And you, when you really put that together, what he's saying, man, I mean, the church erupted. And even while I was watching, I was like, man, that's crazy. To live a sanctified life, to be saved, and you go out and you slip up and you mess up. But it's too late. You're not even in the capacity to, to repent. You have a heart attack out in the streets. You get in a car accident out in the streets. There's a shootout out there. Anything can happen at any time. So the safest place is always being in the will of God. Yes. There's no reason yes. to play with God's grace. That's good. And I didn't even mean to take this this long route because I was no, really no, leading to the, the life of Christ and, his, and and him showing grace. But I think more importantly of, you know, when we think of the church as a whole is that we should be showing grace of showing that you may have messed up, sister. You may have messed up, brother. But you still have an opportunity to get it right with God. Yeah. You still have an opportunity to get it right with Christ. We still we we we, we combat abortion. We mm-hmm. combat homosexuality. Mm-hmm. But we put a period at the end of those things. Yeah. When it's really a comma. Yeah. When it's really a, a semicolon. Yeah. Okay. It's not the end. Okay. You had an abortion, but. Jesus still saves. Repent. Yeah. You're a homosexual, but Jesus still saves. Repent. We will work with you. I'm not let me tell you something. And I'm gonna say this clear. I'm gonna look at one of these cameras here. <laughs> the homosexual community does not have an ally in me, but there isn't a single person that I would go against in the flesh. Meaning, if just because you're a homosexual, just because we're not we're not on the same page on that. Doesn't mean I hate you. 
Mm. I just don't agree with what you're involved with. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. you want to have a full conversation. You want to give your life to Christ. You want to even try to try to try to reform or come out of that lifestyle. We got plenty to talk about. But don't ever think, especially me, and I can speak for myself, don't ever think if you're a homosexual that that automatically makes you my enemy. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, I just don't like. I, I don't. I, it's not even. I don't like. I, you just don't agree. Do. You I just don't agree with the lifestyle. With your lifestyle. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And that's all I expect from them. You know, at the end of the day, if we don't agree, then we go our separate ways. That's fine. But I, but my job is to reach out to them. Yeah. To help them. Like, listen, this is not what God ordained. This is not how it should be. And if they don't want that gospel. Jesus said, kick the dust off your feet and keep it moving. Keep it moving. I'm not going to waste my time Boy. constantly condemning and insult. Like, who's going to really come to Christ if you're constantly bashing and insulting them? Yeah. We, yes, as a church, should have that standard of disagreeing with um, that, 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 that community as a church because we uphold the standard of the Bible. But as a human being, as a person, I don't care what you are. You don't have an enemy in me. Yeah. We can talk. We can have a conversation. If you want to know more about the Bible, know more about Christ, if I can help uh, lead you to Christ, then let's have that conversation. But if you're setting your ways and you just, you you know, you're part of that community, you're going to live in that community, you're going to be a part of that, that's, that, uh, I'm not going to say that's fine with me, but that, uh, you're, I, that isn't going to make me hate you. Yeah. That doesn't make me uh, treat you some type of way. Yeah. That doesn't make, because let me tell you something. What would make me mad is if I see a fellow Christian yeah. mistreating a homosexual. Yeah. That would make me mad. Yeah. Okay. If I see a fellow Christian uh, aggressively attacking a young lady who had an abortion or aggressively attacking uh, a less fortunate family that's in a different type of situation, that's what would make me mad. Yeah. Okay. So not not not, not a homosexual living their life and doing what they doing. That's them doing what they're doing. But what would make me mad is somebody trying to physically hurt them for doing something. Right. Then, then, then you you you're not going to so much have an ally uh, in your your ways, but you're going to have a friend that's going to back you up because mm-hmm. I'm not going to just sit by and let somebody hurt somebody. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like, Especially uh, a Christian. Yeah, Christian. I don't care who it is. Discrimination is wrong. All that is wrong. Now, what we don't support and what we should stand unified on is what the word of God says concerning marriage. Now, marriage is between one man and one woman, and that's cut blank. That's cut and blank. God also calls homosexuality an, uh, an abomination. That's cut and dry. All of these things are within the standard of the Bible, but it is not right for anybody to have a personal uh, attack on somebody or to have a personal feeling that would degrade somebody, homosexual or not, a drunk or not, a person that had abortion or not, all sins, except for, um, that's what it is, except for blasphemy, all sins, as long as there's breath in your body, you are able to be saved. Yep. I'm going to say this one last thing. I know I've been talking for a lot. I'm going to say this one last thing about that, because... um. I wish I could take credit for it, but I seen it on a clip of social media. It does have some good social media does have some good things. I, did, <laughs> I seen it on a clip of social media, and it's something I thought of. It's not like you know something I never thought of, but it's uh, he said it so much better and articulate. Well, he was talking about uh, the, the the thief that went that died with Jesus, right? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And he went down the list and said, "This man never took communion. This man never gave tithes. Never gave offers. Never did a single thing." But because he believed in Jesus, he mm-hmm. said, we're guilty, right? We deserve to be here. But Jesus, he's innocent, mm-hmm. right? And because he believed in that very second, that very moment, Jesus tells him, you will spend an eternity with me in paradise. Yeah. He said, remember me when, you, when you're in the kingdom. He said, you'll spend. And because of that, and that split second, so whatever he's done before, rob, kill, steal, rape, whatever horrible thing that man did in his past, and that dying breath, yeah, yeah, right, that dying breath, no matter how much hell he raised from a youth to that moment, don't even matter. Don't even matter. 
Because he believed on Jesus Christ. So before I reject somebody or before I insult somebody, first of all, I got to pass. So I'll be right there too. I'd have dropped my stool. I'd be like, shoot, I'm out. <laughs> Jesus said, you want me to read your record? No, sir. No, sir. Let's no, leave no, that alone. No, okay? no, let's, no, sir. Let, yeah, leave that right there on the table. And we have to think in that manner. We, we're not above anybody. We are saved through grace. You know what grace is? Grace is having something that we didn't even ask for, don't mm. deserve. I'm giving you grace. If we got what we deserve, I think that was one of the biggest things when I got saved is realizing that I did not get what I deserve. I used to drive drunk all the time. Mm-hmm. I used to, and I mean, not only driving drunk was reckless, but crossing states and bridges. You know what I mean? Like from Jersey to Philly to Delaware. And I... Sometimes I get home, I don't even remember the trip. And even in my sins and in my faults, and, and, and um, Romans 5 speaks of this, yeah. about even yeah. before we even acknowledge Christ, Christ was still loving us and covering. And because of that, I'm still here. Yeah. But if God would have gave me what I deserve, yeah. I might have been over a bridge. I'd have Anywhere, anything could have happened, and I would not know. I'd be in hell right now. I could be in jail right now. So many things, but because of that gift of grace. And we have to always keep that in our mindset. That's good. Boy, boy, you out here preaching. <laughs> and we ain't even gonna, hit the body of Christ. We ain't even hit the body of Christ. Two. We are going to do a part two. Yeah. <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't even hit the I body of Christ. I didn't mean to go that far. No, you're good. You're I good. didn't. But, it, must be, but, but it, it gets me because um, when we talk about ministry and we talk about what tr- the purpose of church in itself is, that is the ultimate goal is to get... I don't want to say for us because we don't save people, but to draw people to Christ. Yeah. Christ said it yeah. himself. If I be if I be up, lifted up, I I'll draw. draw all men. So our job is to, you know, gather the folks. Yeah. Right? Lead yeah. them to the water and let them drink for themselves. Just like how I was actually doing doing a call to the ministry today for my internship. I had to write a paper and I was reading like different scriptures and whatnot. And you got to think about how Jesus even got his disciples, how he handpicked them, right? Yeah. Yeah. He says, uh, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And the Bible says immediately they left. So they left their jobs, right? It said, you know what? Well, Jesus got the offer is much better, right? right so right. I'm out. <laughs> and then you read later on, um, and I believe it was, uh, I, I'm have drawn a blank, but the other two brothers, I want to say Jay, I'm probably wrong, James and Andrew, I'm, probably, I'm bad with these names. But the next two brothers not only left their job, they left their dad on the ship. Yeah, they like, left their dad on the ship. <laughs> they left their said, dad, dad, we got to go. Yeah, we said, well, we out. Like, we out, you know pops. What I mean? <laughs> You got to think of that type of urgency yeah. of how important, how significant um, the gospel is and, yeah. and what our job is being fishers of men. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's key because we can't save people, like you said, but our job, our goal is to lift up the name of Jesus, lift him up so that he's able to draw people to him so that we are just being used by him in that moment for his glory and for his uh, and for his kindness. But we are doing our part in lifting up the name of Jesus. So, yeah, we're gonna have to get back up here and do a part two because oh, this, we'll is, do a part this two. is this is this is good. This is good. We we've gone way over our time, but it's all right, you know, <laughs> because I'm not mad. You know, I I love doing this. And oh yeah, no, it's good. I think you love doing this too because do. you just. <laughs> It's been interesting. I guess it's been holding. I've been holding it. You've been hold, you've been holding this word in for so long, <laughs> just ready to let loose and let it out. But you know, I think the biggest thing is just you know, you know, I'm grateful to, to have you on. I'm grateful to have yeah, you I here. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Um, you know, this is definitely not the last time. You know, nah. we, we, gonna, we got a few more episodes um, to cut out. You know, before we. You know, we, we really we really get rolling on this, but yeah, we can definitely stay right here too on that unity part. Yeah, yeah. that's Un- important. That unity was well, anybody that knows me, I'm big on unity. I'm, right. I'm big on just all, all brothers and sisters in Christ just being unified as one. Um, I don't care who you are, what you are, what you've done. Um, I don't even care what race, whatever. You know, you can be a weirdo for all I care. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> but you know my thing is this you know we all have room at the cross and that unity aspect means so much to me like when you said earlier like you get upset when you see christians like mistreat other people that is literally my heart like i get so 
furious, so upset, so like pissed off when I see or hear of like a, not just a Christian, but like if I hear of a pastor abusing somebody or misusing their powers or misusing their influence, right. really, and 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 abusing their influence and by 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 mistreating people, by by abusing people, sexually uh, abusing people, right. or taking advantage of people in their vulnerable moments, like. That type of stuff that pisses me off, but at the same time, it's like you know, there's there not. I'm not saying there's grace for for what they've done. I'm saying there's grace for that victim. There's grace for that individual right. because a lot of times that has turned them away from the church. That has turned them away from God. I've said this before on a pod, on my podcast many times before. A lot of people don't leave God because of uh, because of God. They leave God because of people. Right. And when you really get to the root of what a lot of people when they they just disown God It's because something happened to them They've been hurt by somebody Some representative of Christ um, And they've just been mistreated Or misused by that person And then it just messes with their theology It messes with whatever going on in their mind And it just further drives them away But th- to those people you know, There's still grace for you There's still love for you There's still a home for you And I feel like we have as believers, as true men and women of God, we have to do our part not to just go after and 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 and, and do everything we can to go after that person, but also go after the one, just like how Jesus went after that one sheep. Right. We have to be that type of right. person, that type of Christian, that type of have that type of mentality to go after that one and to go after the people that that really need it. And honestly, that can be anybody in any you know sort of capacity. You know, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But the thing is, you know, for that one center that is really struggling, that's really going out there, we need to be doing our part and going after them. Of course. So we're going to end this right here. That's you know, good. we got we got a lot of content here. So we yeah, gonna... we do, and um, I'm sure you know I'll come back and we'll definitely uh, chop it up some more. Oh, we yeah. didn't even really get into uh, we didn't get to the meat of everything. We really did not even getting into uh, First Corinthians because that's really what I wanted to talk about. But, yeah. Um, man, it was good though. Uh, it's definitely a good icebreaker for us to, you know, at least get started and figure out where oh, we, we getting started. We just where? getting started. I ain't yeah. got you. Ain't, I ain't get to my notes. Like I got a whole. Let me see. I got a whole <laughs> list of notes here, y'all. Oh yeah, see, yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't get none of my yeah, notes, but it's all good. You know, it's all good. I'm messing. You know, I, I'm. I, I just love having you know different people and different perspectives up here because the biggest thing is, is this platform is not just for me and for me to you know whatever. Is for me to also, you know, share this platform with other individuals who love God, love Jesus, and do their um and do their thing as well. Because right. my heart is this, you know, wherever God takes me, I'm going to take whoever with me with me wherever God takes me, and wherever God blesses me, I'm always going to look back and I'm always going to, you know, bring up people um, who has been, you know, key influential and also has been like my ride or dies and right. been there in my life and right. Dennis is definitely one of them you know he's yes, boy we've been in some <laughs> he's been in some mess we're gonna we definitely gonna we got to talk about that I got we got some topics to talk we about do. y'all we've been through some stuff we like you know we've been through some stuff but it's really by the grace of God that we're still here right. honestly and it's really by the grace of God that we're still friends really right. That's we, true. <laughs> <laughs> that is really true. I think about that often. Often, bro. Yeah, often. I think about that but often. you know, and and it's honestly by the grace of God that you know we're you're, we're still here and in our right minds because you know I really feel like you know this bond, this relationship, our friendship um, has been you know solidified by the things that we've been through, right. and also by the fact that you know God really brought us together at a time. When we really needed each other, you know, we needed yep. a brother. I, you needed a brother down That's here. Right. I needed a brother. Um, and I'm not saying I didn't have because <laughs> Lee. I know you're gonna hear this. You'd be like, "Well, what about me? You know, I was in your life." T T. What about me? <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm talking about in general. You know, you know, Dennis. You know, he he's one of my best friends. You know, he definitely sure. knows where the bodies are buried. And he's just that That's type true. of <laughs> he's that dude for me, bro. Um, you know, all of my guys, you know, y'all y'all know who y'all are. I keep my circle really, really tight and close because That's what, bro, let me tell you something. That's what, let me tell you something. You know, that that situation we've been through. I whew, can't I, trust nobody I don't am. trust nobody. I trust trust is for me. You gain it in drops and you lose it in buckets. Right. So, yeah, <laughs> it's very, it's very thin. But yeah. So we'll go ahead and hop off. Okay. Um, y'all catch part two um, very soon. I don't know when it's going to come out, but it's going to be very soon. That's right. Probably the next time I cut his hair. But, 
<laughs> That's the only time I see you now That is not true I be, I be busy man I do This man be making moves like, I really do but it's Once all right. I get out of school Everything will be fine I'll be around much more Yeah nah you good You maybe good then get, Maybe then your kids Will be less scared of me I'm <laughs> I'll be less, less of a stranger at That, that is so funny Because every, like It's not my older kids My older kids aren't scared of him Because they They, they oh, yeah, know they, him They're used like, to me now They're used to him But the younger two Oh man <laughs> my, my youngest son Will literally hide on the steps For the whole time <laughs> That he's here He can be here for four hours And he'll just be on the steps Peeking around just the steps like, looking. Is this guy gonna ever leave Like <laughs> Man, I guess I don't come around enough. Right, right. No, nah, well, you good. You you a you a single man. You out here in these streets, and you know I'm just a married man. I love my lo- I love my wife. I love my life. You know I love my nah, kids. You know thing. you know that's we got a, a beautiful thing. thing going, and you know you just out here living your best life. You know I'm trying going to, back and man. forth with these. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> this dude. But yeah, we're gonna hop off. We'll uh, we'll catch y'all the next time, and y'all be um, blessed. I'm um, going Jesus name.